This improved version of the second generation Honda NSX takes the fight to brands like McLaren and Porsche in the junior supercar sector. And, as NSX models always have, goes about the task a little differently. This Japanese supercar claims to have been revitalized in terms of its driving dynamics. We'll get to that, but first, if you're new to the NSX, it'll be necessary to get your head around exactly what's on offer here. In considering this model, don't think of it as an expensive Honda. Think of it instead as a cut-price hybrid hypercar, because that's what it is. An electrified supercar with a battery providing electricity to two small motors driving the front wheels, as well as also to a larger one at the back that assists a big 3.5-litre V6 powering the rear axle which makes this a four-wheel drive hybrid powered by four motors. Yes, really. Continuing with the futuristic technology, the powerful brakes aren't actually connected to anything. The big pads are activated virtually and the e-steering works in much the same manner. If, as a committed driving enthusiast, you're seeking an ultimately evolving junior supercar, it might not sound too promising a recipe, but it doesn't take long behind the wheel to discover that Honda has somehow woven all of these elements together into a pioneering supercar that pushes class boundaries just as much as its iconic first generation predecessor did. This NSX inspires cornering confidence in a way most exotic rivals simply can't match. And it's certainly fast enough, despite the inevitably prodigious weight that tends to afflict any car that mates electrical output with a turbocharged combustion engine. That twin turbo power plant generates 500 horsepower, with a further 73 horsepower contributed by the combined efforts of the three electric motors we mentioned earlier. These work together to deliver an electrified boost that smooths over the slight reductions in torque that you'd otherwise find in the upper and lower parts of the rev range. The electric unit at the back, the so-called direct drive motor, which is wedged between the twin turbocharged engine and its nine-speed dual-clutch automatic gearbox, acts as both a flywheel and a starter motor. Up front, meanwhile, lie the two further 38 horsepower motors that together create this car's TMU twin motor unit, there to drive the front wheels, provide torque vectoring for extra corner traction, and complete the operation of this car's SHAWD setup, the sport hybrid all-wheel drive system. The TMU also recovers braking energy during deceleration to supply power to the hybrid batteries. This whole SHAWD setup was recalibrated as part of changes made to this improved model, as were the settings of the adaptive dampers, which feel brilliantly judged in the way that they feel purposefully compliant over bumps and racetrack curbs. Plus, as part of those improvements, larger front and rear anti-roll stabilizing bars were added, increasing stiffness by 26% at the front and by 19% at the rear. The rear hubs and control arm tow-link bushings were also stiffened and grippier Continental Sport Contact 6 high-performance tyres added to the standard spec. All of this further boosting responsiveness through the chassis, to the point that Honda claimed the enhanced version of this car to be two seconds quicker a lap around its famous Suzuka Grand Prix circuit. It certainly feels a slightly more involving thing, helped also by changes to the recalibrated steering. And of course the NSX is still fast, very fast. 62 miles an hour can be dispatched in just 2.9 seconds en route to a 191 mile an hour maximum. Yet the electrification we've described adds frugality to an extent that a running cost improvement of around 10% is possible over this car's most obvious McLaren and Ferrari rivals. Expect 26.4 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 242 grams per kilometre of CO2, those being WLTP rated figures. 
It's an established mark of supercar styling that every exterior element should serve a distinct purpose. That's certainly the case here as part of what designer Michelle Christensen calls the interwoven dynamic approach to this sleek silhouette. In profile, you better appreciate the way that the bonnet line, roof line, floating C pillars and rear quarter appear as one distinctive and unified curve. It all combines with remarkably short front and rear overhangs to create a sleek yet muscular overall stance that properly conveys the required sense of purpose and power. Okay, time to take a seat inside. Now, the cabin design doesn't share much with European rivals, apart from the way that this large centre transmission tunnel flows between the seats into the centre console. It certainly feels like a place designed to do business with the road, the focus appropriately centred on this magnesium-fashioned wheel, through which you view a driver-focused 8-inch TFT digital display, dominated by a central rev counter incorporating a digital speed readout. Flanking this gauge are two digital charge meters, reminding you of this Honda's electrified remit, with that for the main battery on the right, with the left-hand one uh, briefing you on the sport hybrid system's current rate of assist charge. As you can see, there's no conventional gear stick, just this McLaren-style narrow center console strip incorporating gear change buttons and the electronic handbrake, collectively a setup you'll quickly adjust to. Few changes were made to this cabin as part of the upgrades back in 2018, merely detail touches like this new indigo blue shade of trim for the Alcantara and leather upholstery combination. It's not enough to give this interior the kind of really exotic carbon trimmed feel that you get with some rivals in this segment, but uh, this cabin delivers something much more important, ergonomics that make you feel much more comfortable and confident at the wheel than you'd expect to be in a supercar. It's just a pity the Japanese maker can't give this car a more up-to-date media system. Um, dated graphics and rather slow response times characterize this 7-inch center dash Honda Connect color touchscreen. Just below it sits the large uh, silver dial that you'll need to control the various settings of the car's integrated dynamic system driving mode setup. Finally, let's take a look in what we should call the trunk, this being primarily an American sports car. The boot is much wider than it at first appears, wide enough in fact to swallow the full size set of golf clubs that the Japanese maker insists will somehow fit. This segment is full of compelling supercars, but this NSX offers something a little different just as its predecessor did. It's a machine that's greater than the sum of its parts, a pioneering contender in this class that seen its creator once again pushing boundaries. Like the original 90s NSX, this modern era design reinterprets what a supercar can be and delivers it with everyday usability that few competitors can match. It's unconventional, it's divisive, and it defines the spirit of its brand in a way that continues to charm us completely.